Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've had a Steam Deck now for about a year and a half, and one of the things that I am doing a lot of on here is emulating older games because there is a great project available on the Steam Deck called EMU Deck that allows you to, with just a click or two, get just about every major emulator installed on your Steam Deck, and you can go back through and play thousands of games uh, almost perfectly on the Steam Deck platform. Even things like Xbox 360 games play quite nicely on here. And what surprised me about EMU Deck was just how easy it was to set up and also how easy it is to maintain because it will keep your emulators up to date. You don't have to configure controllers. It is as point and click as you can get when it comes to emulation. And I've been emulating for a very long time and I often spend more time configuring my emulators and sorting out problems than I do actually playing the games, but that's all changed since I got the Steam Deck and EMU Deck. And the reason why we've got a Windows computer out here, this is the really inexpensive N100-based Intel PC from GMK Tech I reviewed a little while ago, is because they now have EMU Deck for Windows, and not only does it work on Windows handhelds, it also works on Windows desktop and laptops. So I thought in this video we would install it on the little GM K-Tech PC here and just show you how it all comes together. Because if you are someone who wants to set up a little emulation device for your TV, it can't get much easier than this. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the GM K-Tech PC here came in free of charge from the manufacturer for the review that we did a little while back. However, no other compensation was received. Nobody has reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what we can do with this mini PC and the Windows version of EMU Deck. Now the only prerequisite here is to have Steam installed, so I do have it running right now on this mini PC. And apparently they are using Steam for the controller back end, so you don't have to configure every emulator for the controller when you plug it in. And I'm going to go over here now to download and I'm going to click on Windows and Android. Now, this is available for free now. For a while, you had to be a member of their Patreon to get access to the Windows script, but it's now available to everyone. There are, though, some features that you will get if you do join the Patreon, including the ability to automatically sync your save files between devices. So if you have a Steam Deck and you have a desktop computer that you want to sync to, it might be worthwhile to do that. But I'm going to install it here just on the free tier so you can see what uh, most of us will have access to. Now I'm going to download this and all you end up with is a little command line uh, prompt that will run, basically a batch file here. It's called emudeck.cmd. And there are some f components of this that are a little scary to me. So if you've got a corporate mission critical computer, I would recommend not installing it on that because it will be going in the background and installing software on your behalf. And you have to trust the developers here that nothing nefarious is going on behind the scenes. And that is why I've got it running on this mini PC and not my main uh, Windows computer. So just keep that in mind. You do want to be careful because you are turning control over to the script when it runs. So I'm going to click on it here and run it. And what will happen here is we will likely get prompted to give it access to the ability to install software here. So we're gonna let this thing uh, do its thing. I'll let it play out here in real time so you can see what to expect when you first get going. Now you will likely see this error about a slow DNS when you get started. And what it's looking for is for you to have Cloudflare or Google as your DNS setting in your network settings. I'm going to click no here. I don't want it changing my network settings for me. Um, but you can go in manually and just add these as your DNS servers. And apparently this script depends on fast DNS queries to get things done. But I'm not too concerned about that. I'm going to click on no here. And then it's going to toss us over to the Windows Store because there is an installer app that it needs and that app has to be up to date. So as you can see, this is still a bit beta here. But what's going to happen now is the Microsoft Store is going to come up and what you should do is just run through whatever available updates there are in that store. And as you know, the Microsoft Store can take a little while to update occasionally. So I'm going to go over to uh, my app library here and make sure everything is up to date, and then we'll continue onward. So I verified that everything here is up to date. 
Uh, what you need to do to check is click on the library button down here and then just click get updates and that will download all of the available updates for you. But because we are up to date, I'm going to just close this out and then it will return things to the script here. And now it's going through the process of installing everything. The next thing it's going to ask me is if I want to install the Windows Package Manager. I can see a lot of people getting very nervous right now with all this stuff going on. Um, but this is how it works at the moment. And it's a little cleaner on the Linux side, primarily because it's just running command line uh, executions there, which aren't as uh, visible like this is. Uh, the next thing it's going to do is install Git, so it can install some of these open source projects, which are the emulators, so we're going to agree to that. One thing to note as this is installing is that it will not install the ROMs for you. You have to go out and find those yourself, along with the BIOSes that are needed uh, for many of the systems that you might emulate. What's nice about this, though, is that uh, it will let you know if those BIOS uh, files are correct for the emulator, and I'll show you all of that when we get through this installation. So let me get to the next milestone here and I will show you what happens next. All right, so we are now at the stage where the EMU deck software is loading and it's doing some stuff in the background here to get things ready for us. So we will let that do its thing. If you're curious as to what it's doing, you can click on see more details here and that will show you what is happening behind the scenes. So let's let this finish up here and we'll see what happens next. So now we get our first decision here. Do we want to do this the easy way or the custom way? I'm going to select custom, but if we did easy mode here, it would just get everything installed and we would be good to go. But custom mode has some things that I think you might want to consider. So why don't we jump into that and click on continue here. And this is where things get a little less scary looking because now the EMU deck software is kind of running the show. Now, if I had other drives attached to this computer right now, I would have them as an option so if you have an SD card installed on your handheld or an external hard drive installed, you will have the option to place the ROM directory on any one of those devices. Because this machine only has a C drive at the moment, I am going to select C, although on my Steam Deck I have it running off the SD card and not the main storage. So I'm going to click Next here, and then it's going to ask me what device I am using. So of course you can have it configure for a Steam Deck running Windows, they support a number of other devices here, including the Lenovo Legion Go, which we reviewed a little while back. Maybe we'll install that in a future video on here. And what I'm gonna do here though is select Windows PC because we are installing it on a PC and not a handheld device. And apparently they've got custom settings for each of these devices that are listed. But if yours is not, you can select the standard or generic Windows handheld option here and take it from there. So let's go on to this next screen here. And what I'm being asked for here is what emulators I want to install. Now it's going to give me the default selection here that it thinks are the best solutions, but I also have options to install some other things too. So for example, um, there are some alternative arcade emulators if you don't want to use RetroArch, for example. RetroArch, of course, will install MAME, um, but if I wanted to have MAME installed on its own, I could select it here. Additionally, there's another choice for a GBA emulator, but I'm going to leave things as is. But if there's a system that you don't want to emulate, you can take it off the list here and not install it. But I like having as many options as possible, so we're going to do the whole thing here. And then it's also going to configure things based on the system that I told it I am running during the install. So it will try to get things optimized for this PC. I'm not sure if it's yet knowing how to handle uh, what this PC can do versus another one insofar as graphics performance is concerned. I know on the Steam Deck it will configure the emulators to maximize what the Steam Deck is capable of. Your mileage may vary on a generic desktop PC like this, but you can load up these emulators individually later and make changes if needed. I'm going to click Continue now. The next option here is to enable auto-saving, uh, which will happen every time you leave a game when you're running RetroArch and it shows you which systems would be impacted by this decision. I'm going to turn this on just so that if I quit the game and have to run out, I will have a save state where I last left off, but you can decide not to do that. This is a fun one here. This is called Retro Achievements and this is a really cool project that allows you to earn achievements for playing retro games, much like you would on Steam or on the Xbox or PlayStation. And they have a whole bunch of fun challenges for all of these classic games that are provided by the community. So if you want to get into that, uh, head over to 
uh, their website, retroachievements.org, and set yourself up an account. I already have an account, so I'm going to log in with mine, and we'll take it to the next step from there. All right, so I'm logged in now to my Retro Achievements account. You can see which emulators this works with. RetroArch is one of them, so it'll cover a good chunk of the games that you'll play on here. I'm not going to do hardcore mode. I'm going to keep it easy for now. And then I've got the option here to configure game bezels. Now, right now, it's defaulting to on. I am not a big fan of game bezels. I would prefer just to have a 4x3 or square image so I can turn this off. But if I have it on, it will automatically apply bezels for all of the emulators that you see listed on screen. But let's leave that off here. Click Continue. The next question is, do you want to maintain a 4x3 original aspect ratio or go to a 3x2, which is a little more stretched out? And again, this will set the uh, ratio for classic Sega systems. I'm going to keep mine at 4x3. And then we have a similar question on classic Nintendo games. You can go to 8x7, which is the real SNES resolution. But remember, the original uh, NES and SNES were on CRT televisions that tended to stretch the image out a little bit. So I always found 4x3 for me to look better. But if you're into the 8x7, you can do it right there. Uh, similar question here for classic 3D games. Uh, you can have it go 16x9 using widescreen hacks, but you might see some glitches or leave it at the original 4x3. Again, I'll leave it 4x3 there. We have a similar question here for GameCube games. Now, some GameCube games did support widescreen, but it's going to uh, use hacks for some of the other ones there. Again, I'm just going to leave it by the default here and play it like I remembered it. Uh, also, you have the option for LCD shaders, which will simulate the old LCD matrix screens of the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color, the Game Gear, and the Neo Geo Pocket. I am, once again, someone who likes to keep it as uh, fresh looking as possible, so I'm going to leave that off, but I could always turn it back on later. There are ways to configure this after the fact. Likewise, you can set CRT filters in a similar way. So this will give you some scan lines and a few other effects to make it look like you're on a CRT, but I have a CRT upstairs, which I can use when I want to play it that way. Similar thing here for some of the other systems here from the 90s, the PlayStation, Dreamcast, Saturn, and Nintendo 64. And then we've got some front ends here that we can apply. We have a choice. So what it's going to do here is install right now Emulation Station, Desktop Edition, Pegasus, and it can use my Steam library. So I'm going to install all of them because I can then choose how I want to go. On the Steam Deck, I actually have some of my favorite games configured so I can launch them right within Steam, which this will let you do as well. So I'm always about more choices, so we're just going to leave everything as the default here and install everything. We've got plenty of space here. And then for our emulation station, we have a choice of themes that we can choose for that. So you can pick out one of these many, many themes here for navigating the emulation station. And I'll show you what this all looks like when we get it up and running. Um, but I'm going to pick out one that I think looks pretty cool. Maybe we'll do this one here. That one looks neat. This is Art Flix Revisited. So I'll click on that. Same thing with Pegasus here. I can choose my theme there. I've never actually used Pegasus, so I think I may want to explore this a bit in an upcoming video, maybe. All right, now here we've got our emulation resolutions, and I'm going to leave everything right now at 1080p, but what's nice about this is that you can go on a system-by-system -system basis and have the emulators configured right out of the gate with EMU Deck, and that's what's so great about EMU Deck is it manages all of this stuff for you with very simple menus. If you're into going into the details, this is not for you, but for somebody who just wants to install and play, you can tweak things here, and again, you can come back to this later. But for now, given this hardware, we're going to leave everything at 1080p, because I don't think we're going to be able to achieve more than that with this little machine here. And now it's giving us a rundown of everything that it's going to do and not do, so you can see what we've got going on here. I'm going to click on Finish. And now it is going to go through and pull down all those emulators and get everything installed. Now, I've got a pretty fast internet connection here, but this will still take a while to get installed. So let's let this thing run its course. And when it's done, we should have everything ready to go. All right, so we've got the emulators installed now. And now we're moving on to controller configuration. Now, you may remember I said Steam was a prerequisite here because that's what these emulators will use for controls. And so you have to either launch your launcher through Steam or launch the games directly through Steam. And I'll show you how to do that before we close out the video here. Otherwise, the controls won't work because it is depending on Steam input here. 
because this did d derive itself from the Steam Deck initially where everybody's running Steam. So I'm going to click on Next here. And what we can do now is copy our games over. Now our only option right now is to do the game copying manually. And what we'll get here when I click on this is my emulation folder. Now unfortunately, just clicking on the button there did not bring me to the emulation folder that was set up. So what you have to do is go into the Windows Explorer and pull it up yourself. Now remember, we installed uh, this installation on the C drive. So what's going to happen is that you will get an emulation folder installed on the root of whatever drive you specified. So as you can see here, I'm on my C drive and we have an emulation folder. And then I've got a bunch of subfolders here where I can copy everything. Now if I jump into ROMs, what you will see are all of the systems that are supported here. And so what I have to do is just copy the ROM files from uh, the directories where I'm storing them into the emulation folders ROM folder. So for example, I've got a couple of NES games here. So if I go up through the list here and look for the NES, what I can do is just pull up uh, these two ROMs here, Ice Hockey and RC Pro-Am, and just drag them in there. And now those games will be accessible. And I can do this any time after the installation also, so you're not locked in here. Let me copy over a few more games and then we'll move on to the system BIOS. All right, so I copied over a couple of games with more to come later. I'm going to click on Next now. And now it's asking me how I want to launch my games. Now what I'm going to select here is Emulation Station or Pegasus because I plan on having a lot of games in here and I don't want my Steam library to get cluttered up. But we can, of course, make different decisions later if we want, but I'm going to select that for now. And now it's going through uh, how the Steam, launch, uh, Steam ROM Manager works. And so what we're going to do here is launch the Steam ROM Manager and have it uh, not parse everything, but just the uh, emulation uh, launcher here. So I'm going to click on Launch Now. And what's going to happen here is we're going to see the Steam ROM Manager load up here. It looks like my Steam library just went away for a second. That's normal. It has to overlay this on top. And now you can see I'm being given this choice of parsers. Now what I can do is just toggle everything off and then I'm going to uh, just enable the emulation station and the Pegasus front end. But if I had a couple of games, for example, that I knew were you know, maybe two or three for a system, I could, for example, maybe enable it for the PlayStation 2 or the Sega CD. So what I will do here is enable PS2 because there's only one or two games that I'm going to install for that system. Um, but this is an important step because if you leave it on the default, it's going to basically select everything. But when we're done with this, what will happen here is just my PlayStation 2 games and my two launchers will be accessible on Steam. All right, so now what it's telling me to do is click on Add Games down here, which will grab whatever is in those directories right now. And now I'm going to click on Refresh here. And it found three things, which is Burnout Revenge that was in my PS2 library there, Emulation Station, and Pegasus. So it looks like I've got what I am looking for here. I'm just going to click on Save to Steam, and now these will be in my Steam library. I can now close this out. This is something we can get to at any time later, so you can very easily add and remove games if you want. We're just going to close that out, and now we're being brought to this next screen here, which is some of the hotkeys that we may want to use to access menus in different games. So we can see right now there's a couple of things here on the controller that are set up. And what you can do here is, for example, hold down the back button on the Xbox controller and then we have access to uh, all of these different functions like save states and load states. We can swap layouts. And then if we wanted to exit the emulator, we push these two buttons together. So that's some instructions there that you may want to write down so you don't forget them later. All right, so now what's left? Well, now that we've placed our files in the proper place and selected a front end, you may be asking yourself, what is left? Well, you can simply go back to games mode and start retro gaming. Um, but there's some other things that we have to think about here, especially BIOSes. All right, at this point, we are mostly installed. And any system that doesn't need a BIOS will allow us to load things up and start playing. But I do want to get a couple of BIOSes loaded in for the Sega CD and the Saturn and the PS2. 
And to do that, you can go into the EMU Deck application here, and they've got a very helpful BIOS checker that will let us know if we have some work to do still. And as you can see, it went through and checked for PS1, PS2, and Switch, and Sega CD, and all these other BIOSes, and right now, a lot of them are missing. So what they've got here are some helpful instructions. And if we go back to the Windows Explorer and go to our C drive into that emulation folder, you will see there is a BIOS folder here. And what they want you to do is just drop the BIOSes for these systems into the root directory of the BIOS here, no folders. And they have to be named a certain way. Now there is a link that you can click on here for the cheat sheet that will tell you the file names that these BIOSes should be called. And if you scroll down far enough, you will get to uh, the file name. So for example, I've actually got it pulled up in a browser window here. Uh, the Sega CD BIOS for the US should be formatted as such, BIOS underscore CD underscore U dot bin. So I have a BIOS file that I'm going to now rename to this. Let's move it into the directory and see if it passes muster. All right, so I'm in my C emulation BIOS folder, and as instructed, I drop my Sega CD BIOS into the directory here, but I need to rename it to what I saw in that cheat sheet to this, because it is a US BIOS for the Sega CD and I'm going to be changing the extension. I'll say yes, and now we've got that done. So now if we go back to the BIOS checker, we should see a favorable result on Sega CD. And as you can see here, we've got a green bar to indicate that the Sega CD BIOS we put in is going to work. Let me get the rest of my BIOSes set, just like I did for this one, and then we'll take it to the next step. All right, so it looks like for the systems that I wanted to test out here, everything is up and running. I got my PlayStation 2 BIOS, my Sega CD, and my Saturn, and I'll minimize this and show you what my uh, directory here looks like. And again, I just followed the instructions in the cheat sheet for what these file names should be called. So now hopefully we can get to the emulating. Let's take a look and see what we can get running on this little computer. Now remember, we have to launch everything through Steam. And for me, the best way to do that is just to have Emulation Station or Pegasus pointed at your Steam directory, which is what we demoed a little bit earlier. Now I can use the desktop interface here or I can switch it into big picture mode, which will give us a nicer lean back interface that is very similar to what you would experience on the Steam Deck. And where these games will live is inside a collection in your Steam interface. Now, I recently launched Emulation Station, which is why it's front and center here. More than likely, you will not see it on the first run. So what you want to do is hit your center button, go to Library, and then you will find it under Collections here. And there I've got a couple of things here that are installed, which is Burnout Revenge the Emulation Station, and Pegasus. I'm just going to run Emulation Station just because that's what I am using on my Steam Deck. And what will happen here is it will launch the launcher for us, and then we can load up any game we want. And as you'll see here, the interface is pretty nice on this, and of course you can customize it. So why don't we start with Sega CD, and I've got Sewer Shark in here, and we'll just go ahead and select that ISO file. And what it will do now is pull up the emulator and get things running for us. And the best part is, as you can see, it's launching uh, RetroArch here. I don't have to do anything to map my controls. This is all just going to work, which is what's so nice about EMU Deck. There's a little bit of work up front to get it all put together, but I don't have to map controls. I just go in and start playing no matter which emulator I choose to play with here. And as you can see, we've got the beautiful full motion video of a Sega CD game here. This is the one that was packed in with uh, my particular Sega CD. And once we get through the opening screen here, we can start uh, playing the game here. So I'm going to hit start to uh, get things moving here. If it lets me get through the opening section and we can go from there. All right, so here we are playing a little Sewer Shark. This game does grow on you after a while, believe it or not. I don't have the audio running, but it does work just fine. The controls have mapped without me having to do anything. Everything just kind of booted up here and we were ready to go. Now remember, if I want to get out of the game, I can push both buttons down here at the same time. And what that's going to do is drop us back into the uh, interface here so I can select another game. So why don't we go to the PS2 here 
and let's see if Burnout Revenge launches, which is going to push this hardware a little bit, but I think we might be able to get it going. Now, once again, what's happened here is that it automatically loaded up the PCSX2 emulator. It selected the file here, and the game is loading up. Now, what I did do is I copied over the uh, memory card file from my Steam Deck for this game, so I should be able to pick up where I last left off. Now, they do have a syncing thing, as I mentioned, but that requires a uh, Patreon subscription, so you have to figure out a way to sync up your games on your own without it. And what I'll do here is just get through the opening menu, and we'll see if this game runs okay on this hardware. All right, so the game did load up, but it's running very, very slowly here, and that's because this little mini PC can't quite get it done at 1080p. So what I'm going to do here is drop out of the emulator, and what we're going to do is exit out of this launcher, and we're going to go back to EMU Deck and turn down the resolution a bit and see if that gives us a better outcome. Let's take a look at that. So back on the EMU Deck application, if I scroll down here a bit, you'll see there's an option for screen resolution. And right now, my PlayStation 2 games are at 1080p. So why don't we try cutting it down to 720p, saving these settings, and then we'll reload the emulator and see if that results in better performance. So let's jump back over to Steam here. And what I'll do is just load uh, Burnout Revenge right from my Steam library, because I can. And we'll go ahead here and hit play. Even gives you a nice little banner there, too. And what should hopefully result here is a better outcome uh, from what we had before. And PCSX2 also supports the achievements as well. So we'll let this load up here. And once it's done loading, we'll take a look and see if the performance is a little better now. All right, so here we are now running at 720p, and the performance is much, much better, as you can see. I am getting some screen tearing. I think that's some settings that I have to fix on the capture side here, but the game is running at the full speed now where it wasn't before. So as you can see here, you can change things on a per system level very quickly and easily without having to jump through menus that are not as friendly to jump through on a television when you're sitting on the couch. And this is one of the things I like about EMU Deck is that it's very easy to get up and running even with some of the more advanced emulators here. And here we are running a PS2 emulator at full speed on a PC that costs less than 150 bucks. Pretty cool living in the future. And to switch systems, we can just jump right out of here again. So I'm just going to go over to my controller, hit both buttons at the same time. That will drop us out of the emulator here. It might be a little bit quicker on a faster computer, um, but in a second here, we will see the PCSX2 emulator go away and the launcher will come back and I can pick something else to play. So let me give this a second here and hopefully it will uh, close out on us. And when it does, we'll take a look at a Sega Saturn game. All right, so inside of the Sega Saturn here, I've got Guardian Heroes, so we'll click on that and launch it. Again, you can see, once you get everything set up with all the games in there, it's a lot of fun just to jump back and forth. And this is very similar, of course, to RetroPie on the Raspberry Pi, uh, but with one of these Windows machines, of course, you have a lot more horsepower available to you. And because we have the BIOSes all set up, everything just comes up without any additional configuration. I can go in here and set up a new uh, save file for this particular game here. And once again, the controls are all mapped properly. I don't even know what emulator I'm in right now, actually. Uh, yet I can jump in and start playing another system here with zero controller configuration. So altogether, a really nice way to get your retro gaming on. Uh, now what I want to do, though, is jump through some of the additional features of the EMU Deck application so you can get a feel for some of the things you can do with it after install. Now, I'm not going to cover everything here, but I will cover some of the more important stuff that I think you should know about. When you first load up EMU Deck, you're going to see this screen, the quick settings screen, and this will allow you to uh, change your mind on things that you decided early on in the installation process. So, for example, if you decided you really do want those bezels after all, you can turn them on here, and that will apply globally for every uh, emulator that supports those bezels. So you can relitigate your past decisions if you want. Uh, you also have another important option here, which is the Manage Emulator section. So if there are updates to emulators, you will find them in here and you can update things. You will also occasionally see the option to update the configurations that EMU Deck has put together for each emulator. 
This is probably going to be more important on one of the handhelds that they support directly because if there are optimizations that they've been able to figure out through configuration changes, they will push it down to the app and then you can apply those to each emulator. It does though overwrite any settings that you put into that emulator yourself, so just be aware of that. But if you wanted the easiest way to get the most out of your Windows handheld, it will be seen here because if it's supported, uh, they will be tweaking settings to give you the best experience on those devices. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit further here, you can see the screen resolution section that we were at before. You also have your retro achievements in here. I'm all logged in already, so as things go, I can uh, go ahead and not worry about that section. But if you wanted to change who's logged in, of course, you can do that. They also have a neat option here for boot mode, but you have to be a patron to do this. But basically, you can have your computer boot right into Steam, for example, so you can bypass uh, having to go through Windows. There are, of course, other ways to do that, but if you wanted to have a very quick, easy way to go about it, you can do that here. Uh, the same goes with uh, the cloud saves. You do have the option to back up your games to the cloud, but not sync them. So if you were a patron, you can manage the sync through their service there. So cool stuff, and uh, I think a really neat way to get emulators going very quickly, especially on some of these little mini PCs that are getting really powerful. This is the lowest of the low end right now, but we've looked at some other ones that have the latest Ryzen and Intel chips that should very easily uh, give you great performance at higher resolutions of the GameCube and the PS2 and the Dreamcast and all of those other cool systems that this supports. Even the Xbox uh, should actually, 360 should work pretty well uh, through a more recent Ryzen device. I'm able to play Xbox 360 games at full speed on my Steam Deck, for example. So I think this is really cool. It's not for everyone. I think it's for people that just don't want to mess around too much with settings and everything. They just want to get into their games. This organizes things well. I think it makes use of all of the other great open source projects like the emulation station to get you going very quickly. And I think if you were looking for a Windows solution for what you're seeing on Steam Deck with the uh, EMU Deck project, you now have it on the Windows side. So very, very cool stuff. That's going to do it for this one. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.